magandang araw sa inyong lahat. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening po sa lahat ng nakikinig po. Hello to all our viewers from here and around the world. Ang napakaganda na ating talent kayman ngayong ako nito. Isang mainit na pagbati po sa inyong lahat. Friends, friends, welcome to the Bridges Show. I'm very happy to be here. And I think it should be a really interesting and fun topic. But there are things you want to learn. So I, I want to take it from there and then I listen to them. Meron ko silang mga mitiin upang maging uh, makabuluhan pa ang pagiging katoliko. Lalong-lalo na sa susunod na generasyon. Sa akin po, sa mga kabataan, ano, uh, use competence no, as a basis. In real life, hindi naman talaga tayo tumitigil sa buhay. Kailangan talaga, tuloy lang ang buhay kahit anong challenges natin. Palawan, Cebu, Baguio City, Atty. Dwight, at Hila Unwan. So we are saying that revenge travel is real. Mas kailangan natin na i-share ang kiwaga ng siya sa mga tao. Food and health should go hand in hand. So yan ang gusto namin para tingin sa gobyerno. So if you just devote your life to change, Pwede ka mayaman sa pera. Pwede mayaman ka sa tao. Siyempre, ang pinakamaganda po naman sa ating universidad ay yung talagang um, naipatuturuan po tayo kung paano uh, magmabuting tao. Happy anniversary to Bridges! Here at Bridges, we build bridges of faith, bridges of hope, and bridges of love. In a world full of stress and physical, emotional, mental, and all kinds of exhaustion, burnout is real and it is a struggle. Life can get busy and overwhelming, but one's well-being matters and finding the right balance is the key. In the next episode of Bridges, learn how to prioritize self-care, manage one's priorities, and create boundaries to prevent emotional physical, and mental exhaustion, and thus promote one's well-being. We have today a very special guest who will share with us and discuss the topic, Burnout to Balance. Pero bago po ang lahat, good afternoon, good morning, good evening to everyone, and welcome to our Bridges show. I'm Dr. Aida Marie Tabangay Lim from the Faculty of Medicine and Surgery of UST and also an officer of the UST Medical Alumni Association. I'm also involved in the training of general surgeons at Jose Reyes Memorial Medical Center. And with me is my co-host, Dr. Dennis Flores. Good afternoon, Dr. Dennis Flores. Hello, Dr. Aida. I am Dr. Dennis Flores. I am a pediatric nephrologist. I practice in USD Hospital. I am currently the secretary of the USD Medical Alumni Association. We will be your hosts in today's episode of Bridges, sponsored by the UST Medical Alumni Association and the UST Alumni Association. Before we continue, may I ask our audience to please remember to like and share our show and subscribe to our UST Thomasian Alumni Community YouTube channel and follow our Facebook page. So, Dr. Ida, it's so nice to, to see you here. Uh, yeah. your attendant um, today. Yeah, this is something new to me. You know, being a surgeon, uh, you know, our work is in the OR, um, in the wards. Uh, this is a new topic, but I'm excited to hear from our guests. Yes, you are right, Dr. Aida. We do have a very interesting topic for today. And uh, Dr. Aida, can you ah, introduce okay. our yeah. very special guest for today? Ah, okay, I think it's my role to introduce our special guest. Um, he is the past president of the USC Medical Alumni Association, uh, chair of the Department of Neurosciences at the Pampanga Medical Specialist Hospital, head of the section of Neurology and Stroke Unit, chair of the Department of Physiology, associate professor at the Angeles University Foundation. He has a lot of achievements and most noteworthy is that he is the president of the Philippine Psychiatric Association, past president of the Philippine Neurological Association, and also he has been awarded as the most outstanding physician award from the Philippine Medical Association back in 2014 
and the most outstanding silver jubilarian from the USC Medical Alumni Association of America in 2019. So there's still a lot more um, achievements, but we won't. Um, it may might use up our time. So here with us this afternoon is our special guest, Dr. Arnold Angelo Pineda. Let's all welcome Dr. Pineda. Good afternoon, everyone. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. And uh, thank you for that kind introduction. Hello. Dr. Yes. Pineda, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you for accepting our invitation for you to speak today. Uh, yes. Despite your busy schedule, uh, salamat at pinaunlakan mo ang aming uh, invitation for to be a speaker today. So guesting in Bridges is like coming home to UST, our alma mater again. How many years were you able to spend in USD? And in those years, I'd like to ask Dr. Pineda, what are your fondest memories of your USD stay? Uh, Dr. Flores? Uh, yes. Hello, hello. Sorry. Uh, I'm having uh, audio problems. I, I was not able to hear the questions. I um, I said, Dr. Pineda, that um, guesting in Bridges is like coming home to USD, our alma mater. So I'd like to ask, how many years did you spend in USD? And what are your fondest memories during your stay in USD? Yes, I stayed in USD. Uh, I, was, uh, I took my BS Biology Accelerated at the College of Science. Then I proceeded to the Faculty of Medicine and Surgery for my medicine, and then internship also at USD Hospital, and my residency training also at USD Hospital. So, medyo matagal-tagal din po ang in-stay ko sa USD. No? So, uh, my fondest memories here, are huh? uh, usually uh, yung uh, the, being staying here at the, uh, uh, here, at the, at the campus. No? So, uh, fondest memories also yung mga teachers natin, no? Uh, maraming memories na uh, that that uh, uh, use uh, that, that you, you that you that 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 come back during uh, our alumni homecoming that uh, that we usually have uh, every year in January at uh, USD. So yun po yung mga fondest memories natin. Yeah. So that was twelve years of studying, and then. You, of course, you became the president of the USD Medical Alumni Association. So, parang you never left USD naman. Dr. Aida? Yeah. And how about your specialization? What enticed you to go to neurology and psychiatry? I think these are some specialties that <laughs> during med school, di ba? Isa sa kinakatakutang subject yung neuropsych. So, what motivated you to go to this specialty? Uh, actually, uh, initially, I really wanted to go into neurology at first, no? So, um, uh, I, I was always interested in neuroanatomy, neurophysiology, uh, neuro, uh, neurology in general. But when I applied for residency in UST, UST is the only institution uh, or uh, training program that offers both programs neurology and psychiatry. So during my interview, uh, Dr. Poblete, no, Dr. Jesus Poblete told me that uh, if I'm going to go home to my province, which is Pampanga, uh, might as well take psychiatry also. Kasi uh, more often than not, uh, not only uh, uh, neurology patients would come, but also psychiatric patients would come also to neurology specialist. So that's uh that's what uh, uh made me to uh uh take new both neurology and psychiatry as my specialty in residence. That's very nice to hear Dr. Pineda. Okay, uh Dr. Ida, uh yeah. as you mentioned, we have a very interesting topic for today. Uh yeah. Um, it's something that I think is is um, applicable to any age group, in any economic status, in whatever you're doing, whether you're a student, 
you're an employee, you're a teacher, uh, this topic, I think, would be very, very helpful. And we are very fortunate to have the expert, uh, Dr. Pineda, with us today. It's quite handy, so, no? Considering the changing times, diba? comparing the years before when we were quite laid back and with this uh, technology, you know, our topic is uh, very um, real. Very timely. Yes. timely. Very timely. So let's start the ball rolling, no? Yes. Let's hear from Dr. Pineda. Okay. So I'll uh, start sharing my slides first. Okay, so uh, our topic for this afternoon is uh, burnout to balance. No? So uh, what uh, we have to uh, go into, what is burnout no, in the first place? So it, it's, it is something uh, very real and uh, it is something that uh, uh, preoccupies most of our uh, population right now. So burnout is an emotional, mental, or often physical exhaustion brought about by prolonged or repeated stress. No? So uh, this is uh, usually, uh, burnout was initially described uh, with problems at work or occupation. But it can also occur uh in parenting, you can have parental burnout, caretaking, no caregiver burnout, or romantic relationships, romantic burnout. Okay. So it is already a syndrome because uh, it has been conceptualized as resulting from chronic workplace stress. No? So uh, the working word here is workplace. So it is occupational. So feelings of energy depletion or exhaustion, increased mental distance or what we term as negativism or cynicism towards one's work and reduced professional efficacy. Okay. So this is, as I mentioned, occupational, meaning uh, it occurs in a specific situation wherein it is in the work context. So it, it cannot occur in other contexts, but specifically for work. And uh, the signs and symptoms we mentioned are exhaustion. So this can be feeling drained out, no, emotionally exhausted, palaging pagod, tired and down, don't have the energy, wala na energy. No? It may also present as physical symptoms like pain or GI or stomach problems. And then, as we mentioned, uh, the attitude towards the job becomes negative. It is becoming alienated towards the work. It's becoming cynical towards the working condition and even work colleagues. Okay, So uh, you or the patient or the one experiencing the burnout may increasingly distance themselves emotionally from their work. Okay. And the third one is reduce efficacy. So the reduce work performance, no? So performing everyday tasks, whether at home or for family members, is already affected. And usually, uh, they find it hard to concentrate. So difficulty in concentration and they already lack creativity. Okay. okay. So, Diagnosing burnout is usually using a questionnaire. No, this is the Maslach Burnout Inventory, which is available online, and you can uh, diagnose uh, the patient with burnout because you would have to differentiate burnout from other psychiatric illnesses like depression, anxiety disorders, or chronic fatigue syndrome. Okay, so. Uh, in medical professionals or, or in professionals that work in the medical field, it is recognized as an occupational hazard because it entails, uh, because like in medicine no? uh, or for our, our residents or our uh, interns or medical students, uh, it entails 
lengthy and intense interpersonal contact. And these uh, burnout in physicians can be as high as 80%. Okay? So uh, there is a specific uh, Maslach inventory for medical professionals. So this is the Human Services Survey. And uh, it also has the three scales, emotional exhaustion, depersonalization, and personal accomplishment. But it is more specific towards the medical profession. Okay, or uh, which includes physicians, nurses, health aides, social workers, health counselors, therapists, etc. So some statistics that among ICU physicians and nurses, 50% have uh, burnout symptoms or 52% of nurses. Okay, uh, For a specific profession like neurologists, 60.1 had one symptom of burnout. And usually, uh, it affects patient care. So that's one because of its uh, decrease in efficacy. The uh, physician usually would lack compassion already. Increased tendency to have errors, especially medication errors, and poor patient satisfaction on the part of the patient. Okay. So again, we uh, have a high rate of burnout and that there is a higher rate of work-life dissatisfaction. Okay? So among the medical specialties, family medicine, general internal medicine, and emergency medicine had the highest rates of burnout. So this is a, a sample of the mass lack inventory scale showing uh, emotional exhaustion, depersonalization, and personal ac accomplishment uh, questions for each. No, So like emotionally drained, used up the end of the day. No, Depersonalization, I feel I treat that some of my clients or my patients were impersonal objects No, and sympathetic towards people. So this is important, especially for medical health professionals. Okay? Another uh, important uh, burnout classification is school burnout. So this is on students. Actually, not on students, but also for uh, teachers, no? uh, those who are in the teaching profession may also experience school burnout. So this is the same thing, no? exhaustion, uh, cynicism, and depersonalization, but it presents on the school setting. Okay? So exhaustion, again, the student feels strained, chronic fatigue, no? Cynicism towards uh, work and uh, especially schoolwork, okay? So in, uh, uh, as you mentioned, there are three, no? Exhaustion, uh, which may present as school strains, particularly overtaxing schoolwork. Second is cynicism in school where there is indifference or distal attitude towards schoolwork in general, no? or losing interest in doing academic work. Okay? And third would be lack of school-related efficacy, which differs to diminished feelings of competence as well as less successful achievements. Okay? So school burnout may overlap with earlier concepts because sometimes exhaustion, meaning overwhelmed, Difficulty in sleeping may resemble stress, tiredness, and anxiety. Okay, so these are some of the inventory for uh, uh, questions that may uh, point to school burnout. No? Overwhelmed by school work, lack of motivation in doing my work. Inadequacy in doing schoolwork, sleeping badly, losing interest, etc. Okay. So again, school burnout is exhaustion, cynicism, and inefficacy. Okay, so what can we do? No, especially this involves young adults. No, so we have one to cultivate meaning and purpose in, in young people, supporting them in developing gratifying and durable relationships and helping young people experience their lives more as the sum of their uh, uh, as to some of their achievements so 
here's how to cope. No, there are three R's to cope with student burnout. Recognize, reverse, and build resilience. No? Recognition meaning identifying the symptoms. Noting changes in mental, physical, or emotional states. And definitely, for any disease or any condition, the earlier, the easier it is to cope up with the condition. So the earlier we recognize, the earlier we are able to cope. The second R is reversal. Okay, reverse. How do we do this? No coping strategies like seeking help already, whether professional help from a doctor, from parents, from friends, from teachers, or from mentors. No? Meditation can also help no? uh, by reducing stress and anxiety, taking breaks, uh, and going into a hobby. That's, that brings about joy, creativity, or physical activity. And the last is resilience. Okay? So resilience is uh, meaning able to cope up with the stresses or what uh, life brings you. Okay? So some of the uh, strategies in building resilience would be gratitude which is expression that generates positive emotion. So we say thank you, no? And we see something as half full rather than half empty or seeing the silver lining in any situation. Socialization meaning uh, do not feel isolated. We have to develop stronger social bonds and avoid being overwhelmed, okay? And one of the things that can help build resilience is journaling. That writing down before, di ba, yung diary natin, you set time aside to know yourself better by recording your achievements and developing a sense of accomplishment. Okay? So how do we prevent burnout in an organizational level? No? For example, for residents, we limit duty hours. We reduce the number of meetings. We encourage a work-life balance, no? meaning regular meal breaks, planned paid time off, flexible work schedules, and uh, refining, for example, for residents, electronic health records. To improve workflow, we have to protect the boundaries of our residents or of our medical professionals and provide adequate compensation. In sustaining positive work and learning environments and culture, we have to set realistic workload expectations, use metrics to assess the nature, quantity, and quality of workload, reducing administrative tasks, increase human resources, and establish mentorship programs. Lifestyle, definitely change in eating habits. We said kanina, regular meals, regular time. Uh, food supplements, no vitamin supplementation, frequency and amount of time in exercise. No exercise can help reduce stress, can help prevent depression. Sleep habits schedule the time of sleep, quality of sleep, and the number of hours of sleep. Okay? Definitely substance use, not only illegal substance, for example, uh, sleeping pills, no? Uh, anything that can help you relax, maybe you can reduce that. Frequency and amount of time spent in religious activities may help as well. So these are the 10 ways to combat burnout. No, we already mentioned some of this. No, Signs and symptoms, recognition, rest and recovery, No, decreasing the workload, uh, changing work habits, coping mechanisms, exercise, switching off or having time for yourself, support system, no? family, uh, your uh, seniors, no? mentors, and the environment and values. Okay. So five ways to recover. So this is five ways that we can say uh, that we can implement in our daily a uh, way to prevent burnout, create a daily routine or time management or structure. 
adapting a healthy lifestyle with plenty of rest, nutritious meals, enough water, and 30 minutes of exercise. Learn to say no or prioritizing what you say yes to. Okay? Get your priorities straight, health, relationships, and overall all well-being. And practicing sleep hygiene by having healthy sleep habits, turning off devices at least an hour before sleeping, having good ventilation, and you can black out your curtains in your room so you can have good sleep already. So one thing that uh, that is increasing in uh, uh, awareness is mindfulness. No, so mindfulness is the awareness of one's internal states and surroundings, and you it can help people avoid destructive or automatic habits and responses by learning to observe your thoughts, your emotions, and present moment experiences without judging or reacting to them. Okay? So these are some of the mindfulness uh, practices. Not take a mindful brain break, breathing techniques, check in with your emotions, no? uh, observation for objects, for enduring walking. And we mentioned a while ago, positive affirmations may help. No? Again, the journaling, listening to music, exercising, uh, hobbies, no? drawing, coloring, uh, reading guided imagery for relaxation, and spend extra time outdoors. So these are just some mindfulness exercises. You can find this in YouTube. No, There is wise mind breathing, mindful belly breathing, and wise mind urge surfing. Okay. Mindful eating, mindful walking, and body scanning. No, so these are some of your mindfulness exercises which you can practice every day. Okay. And again, gratitude, saying thank you. Set the task of giving thanks to five persons in a week for what they have done or something they possess that you are grateful for. And make this a habit. Okay. And this promotes an increase in overall sense of well-being. Okay. Again, new habits. No, we mentioned a while ago: journaling, jotting down positive messages, meditation, exercises. Okay. So, uh, lastly, is uh, definitely there is a difference between burnout already and uh, a psychiatric illness. No, so uh, these are some of the. Uh, signs or uh, when to seek professional help already. So if these are already lasted two weeks or more, like difficulty in sleeping, changes in appetite, unplanned or weight changes, difficulty in getting out of bed in the morning because of mood, difficulty in concentrating, loss of interest in things you are usually enjoy, you find enjoyable, inability to complete usual tasks and activities, and feelings of irritability, frustration, and restlessness, uh, you would already need to seek professional help. So if you uh, have someone experiencing the symptoms, um, a referral to a mental health professional is needed already. So conclusions, burnout is already a syndrome. It's a clinical syndrome classified in ICD-11. It is an occupational, it is a school, it is a medical phenomenon. Uh, there are three R's in coping with burnout. We have to recognize, we have to reverse, we have to be resilient. And mindfulness and gratefulness are key in order to uh, prevent burnout and to develop resilience. I think that's my last slide. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Pineda. That was very insightful. Do you agree, Dr. Aida? Sorry. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Pineda. No, uh, we learned a lot about the symptoms, the causes of burnout, and now we're ready for questions from our participants. Okay. 
I'll start with the first question, Dr. Aida, if you allow me to. Okay. Um, from the chat box, Dr. Valencia is asking how new is burnout as a phenomenon or diagnosis? Because I think we have, in the past, no, as, as students also, we felt also burdened with schoolwork and all, but we never heard of burnout before. So is this terminology or diagnosis slash phenomenon just recently um, not really discovered, no, but it came out just recently? Or is it something present already in the past, but we are not just aware of it? Yes. Actually, it has been present before, but it has not been classified as something as a syndrome. No? So, as I mentioned in the lecture, uh, it is already a syndrome. No? So ICD-11 classified it as a burnout syndrome. So, this was actually the... My source for that paper is around 2023 or 2022. But some of the papers on burnout have come up uh, like uh, eight, mga 10 to 8 years ago. No? 10 to 8 years. So, mga 20, pre-pandemic. Meron na silang, uh, meron na mga papers about uh, burnout in specifically yung mga nakita ko more on uh, medical residents. No? So locally, meron siya for UPPGH. They did uh, a, a study on neurology residents, uh, OB residents, and uh, internal medicine residents. No? So uh, it is something that has been described uh, recently, but uh, we all know that some of the symptoms that uh, nakita natin, yung I, I described for burnout, are some things that we have already seen before, but not described as such before. No, so ano lang parang stress ka lang, no? pagod lang, di ba? Or exhausted ka lang. But now uh, there is a general definition for this as a clinical syndrome. So thank you for that. No, um, although it has been, as you have mentioned, no, a clinical syndrome, it is being recognized. I don't know if you would agree with me. No, in the workplace, in training, when you have a resident who would be like experiencing burnout, and they would like to use this as an excuse, sometimes they're not under understood, tama yeah. ba? Oh. by the admin or by their superiors. Um, so how? Should we deal with it? No. Um, kasi minsan isipin mo, um, sumo siyang pagbigyan, no? but then at the back of your mind, baka naman mahina. Ganun ng sa ano natin, di ba? Mahina lang tong trainee, hindi niya kaya. So how should we tackle such a situation? Yes. So actually, we have to approach it na we really have to identify if really that uh, resident or that uh uh, trainee has burnout symptoms. So we can use the mass lack inventory. No? So we have mass lack inventory in order to say that the, this patient has burnout. Uh, secondly, as I mentioned, we have to differentiate if the person is having a burnout syndrome or having a psychiatric or mental health issues already. No? Kasi nga, sometimes the uh, symptoms may overlap. Pwedeng pareho rin yung, di ba, yung uh, sinabi ko kanina, yung, yung how uh, some depressive or anxiety symptoms may also present as burnout symptoms. So, we also have to look into the possibility that this uh, trainee or this, medic, uh, this resident may be uh, having more than just burnout. So, maka, maka mental health uh, issues din siya. I have another question. Um, um, the burnout symptoms are usually exhaustion, feelings of negativism, and, uh, and uh, reduction in efficacy, professional efficacy. So if I'm a lay person, it would be hard for me to distinguish from depression. But you yeah. mentioned um, for you to say it's a psychiatric thing like depression, it has to be like present for more than two weeks. Yes. Does and that mean that if burn out symptoms, your depression. symptoms should recover quickly? Which one? 
uh, in burnout symptoms. Ah, if burnout. it's more than two weeks, then you think of psychiatric problems. Yes. So does that mean when you have burnout, out, you should recover in less than two weeks or immediately after that uh, event? Uh, what is uh, trying to be emphasized for burnout is usually the symptoms would be present uh, in the particular situation, yung occupation. Di ba sinabi natin, kung nasa work situation siya, tapos dun lumalabas lahat ng symptoms. That is what we identify as burnout. Kasi sometimes, if they are out of the situation, nawawala yung symptoms. Hindi na, hindi na sila feeling emotionally exhausted. Hindi na sila uh, yung efficacy, etc. Di ba? Kaya, there is a clause there that identifies that burnout is situational. Na nasa situation na yun. So, whether it's occupational, whether it's medical, whether it's school, di ba? So, nasa situation na yun, dun lumalabas yung symptoms natin. Okay. So, if you mentioned coping uh, strategies like recognition, uh, re reverse, and then uh, resilience, if the person um, would have problems with those coping strategies, then is it possible that the condition may, may lead to depression eventually? Actually, yes. It sometimes if it's uh if they are predisposed to have uh like uh mood disturbances, no, or uh sometimes that it affects already their work, that is it, it already affects occupational functioning, uh this might uh that's why we have to identify that uh that patient might not be in burnout but might already be depressed might already have anxiety, might already have other psychiatric illnesses rather than purely burnout. Um, additional question regarding that, maybe before we move to another topic. So if burnout can probably lead to depression and other psychiatric illnesses, is there a um, danger sign or a certain uh, period wherein we say, uh, this um, individual has been in this situation, burnout for a considerable period of time. And so we have to remove the person from the environment so as not to lead to any psychiatric problem. Yes. Uh, how do we detect that? Like, how do we advise the train or the individual? Um, it's useless to continue in this situation because it's not healthy enough, healthy for you. Meron bang ganun? Yes. Actually, yun nga. Meron tayong uh, yung inventory that they would have. Uh... I mean, yung na-diagnose na mo and then you try to give some uh, intervention. Pero oh, so, to to so at what point can we advise na maybe transferring or change of environment would help them avoid this to progress? Yeah, that's one of the recommendations. No, so if the environment, no, uh, if the environment or the situation of the trainee or the or the or the employee is the one that is triggering uh, the burnout in the patients because he is already dissatisfied, he is already not happy with his work. No, uh, that uh, his work environment or his work colleagues ayaw na niya, uh, definitely we can recommend na he could change. Uh, he could shift to another uh, occupation or shift to another uh, company or uh, another hospital because uh, the current environment is not already helpful to him. Hindi na, hindi na siya nag-grow, hindi na, hindi, na, hindi na nakukuha yung what is supposed to be uh, he is uh, or, uh, what's supposed to be beneficial from that situation. Dennis, I think there's a question. Yes, yes. So, Dr. Ida, uh, i-allow na natin ang residents na mag-leave kapag nagbabird out. Tama ba? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, no? I mean, there's a question from our ah, okay. audience. Um, would like to... How can one develop a life-work balance to prevent burnout? Ayun. Yung sinabi natin kanyang life-work balance is uh, 
yung uh, resettling your schedule, di ba? Yung having uh, regular meals, yung sleep mo would be uh, proportional to, which is ideally, uh, madaling sabihin. Pero kung bawa resident ka, di ba? Okay. <laughs> medyo mahirap, especially for us, di ba? Parang for our residency training, di ba? Kailangan you stay late in the hospital, you have to come in early, gagawa ka pa ng mga, ano mo, presentation mo, di ba? Magpre-present ka, may memorize mo pa lahat ng kaso mo, ipre-present mo sa consultant mo, etc. So, it's uh, easy to say na uh, this, you, you, you have to work in something in your work-life balance, but syempre, uh, that's the what is, re- what that's what's recommended, no? Yung, Uh, regular meals, exercise, uh, take time, take time out for yourself, no? Yung yung may me time ka, no? And then uh, yun nga, kung may hobbies or kung may breaks, etc. Uh, you would put that in to make a balance in your uh, in balancing your work and your uh, personal life. You should have good time management too. Yeah, so time management. Then. You mentioned that um, patients with burnout syndrome would have difficulty in sleeping. And one way of addressing the burnout would be get enough sleep. So would you advise uh, sleeping aids? Um, probably melatonin. Um, Siguro mga natural. Uh, yeah. tough to... uh, I, I think I mentioned it in one of the slides. No, Siguro... Uh, we want to go as natural as possible. So, kung melatonin, wala naman problema na melatonin is a natural sleep stimulant, no? Uh, I would avoid anything uh, artificial like benzodiazepines, no? Or the stronger atypical antipsychotics that can help in sleeping, but sometimes they may develop uh, tolerance and addiction. So, yun gusto natin iwasan naman. So, nakakatulog na siya, eh, na-addict naman po siya sa, ano, sa benzodiazepine. So, that's uh, one thing we have to watch out for. And those medications should be prescribed and monitored by uh, mental health professionals. Yes. yes. So, for um, students, no, who really would like to be in this field no, or in other fields naman, and they are experiencing burnout, Do you think um, it's advisable to have gap years? Actually, yeah. Uh, usong-uso ngayon. Sa mga, <laughs> like sa mga pam- kahit pamangkin ko, may mga gap years sila. They would take a year off from pre-med bago sila mag-medicine. No? So I think it's something personal. It's something that uh, if they think would help them discern kung ano talaga ang gusto nila. Kasi sometimes, di ba, Uh, mapipilitan na, na di ba, mabilisan, kailangan matapos mo na kaagad in this number of time. Siguro, if you are given time to contemplate, no, so, uh, a, a gap year, would also uh, makita mo yung how to balance what uh, what you want and what is achievable siguro. So, uh, balance din naman yun. I think um I think almost everyone is affected naman ano yung pagka busy ng life uh, nowadays present time um would you know of any company or institution na may policy na talaga sila to prevent burnout like uh pwedeng meron silang ano ba mga exercise or something na period or meron silang period na no touch or parang magbe-break muna from work Meron bang ganun sa mga yeah, actually, companies? Ang um, UPPGH, no, uh, when I was preparing for this lecture, kasi nag-lecture din ako for this, for the neurology convention, sa neurology residency burnout, mm-hmm. they have, yung psychiatry department ng UPPGH, mm-hmm. uh, they have prepared a uh, parang how, parang resiliency program and burnout. no, So parang identifying residents who are prone to burnout Tapos meron silang uh, parang identifying, so identifying uh, burnout symptoms. And then uh, meron silang, they can go to a particular mentor 
or they can refer so per, per department ba department of uh, pediatrics meron silang ano meron silang uh, liaison sa department nila that they can talk to and then it would liaise with the department of psychiatry no so parang mega ganun and then meron din sila yun nga yung mga no touch yung mga uh, bibigyan sila ng time off bibigyan sila ng uh, yun nga parang mga may mga mindfulness lectures mindfulness exercises tapos yung mga hobbies and resiliency etc so meron meron na ganun na program na sa UPPGH uh, which are they implementing in the in the whole hospital share ko lang din no kasi like in our institution sa surgery no very busy yan um minsan akala ng mga resident tuloy-tuloy lang so dag enforce ako that you should take four leaves talaga by the middle of the year schedule niyo na yan mag-deck na kayo mag-leave para at least meron silang mga five days off Yeah. That is really very advisable. Lalo na ngayon. Lalo na, lalo na uh, post-pandemic. Actually, pandemic and post-pandemic. Actually, yung mga ibang papers on burnout, yung highest rates were during the pandemic. Kasi nga, definitely, because of our situation, uncertainty, etc., mas stressed out sila, mas exhausted sila during that time. You mentioned one of your slides, Dr. Uh, Pineda, that um, parang I, I saw one strategy, less number of hours of yes. work. Yun nga. So, so would you advise of, for our treatment? They decrease the number of hours. Yung duty hours, yung, yung, ano yung, yung the, the, the time they have to be in the hospital, the day time they have to report, etc. Uh, parang minandate yun. dun sa uh, kasama dun sa ano dun sa uh, burnout uh, strategies nila I think we're improving somehow because during our time I think our duties lasted for like 36 hours may yeah. parang 24 hours na lang but I think that's still not ano no parang <laughs> still in on that lower it down pa no? Oh, mm-hmm. kasi if you comp- like sa atin di ba may 48 uh, 72 hours tapos post duty mo mag, mag mayroon ka pang outpatient, 'di ba? Papasok ka pa hanggang 5 PM or mag-rounds ka pa hanggang 5 PM. Ah, uh, ngayon nga like for medical clerks and interns, I think they have already reduced yung mga duty hours, tsaka yung mga post duty, etc. Uh, which is some which is something na nagii-improve na na in order to prevent these kinds of situations. Dr. Arno, is burnout the same as stress? Or is stress a prelude to burnout? Stress kasi is a general term for anything that uh na ano diba yung that that produces change na that and it's negative, etc. Burnout kasi is a specific uh term for yun nga, emotional exhaustion. Uh, the reduced efficacy and cynicism. So, may particular definition na siya. Yung stress kasi parang it's a broad term for like, di ba, yung uh, stress, uh, stress eating or stress, stress uh, related activities, etc. It's, it's something very general. But it's, uh, it connotes a negative thing because it, uh, it may provoke Uh, a psychiatric illness, no mental health issues, etc. Burnout is not unique to the medical field, no? Because we could also have listeners who are from other um, fields yes. of specialization. What other professions are affected, no? By commonly affected by burnout, based on your experience in your It's practice. Dynamical, no. Uh, One of the most common is school burnout students, no? Actually, not only students, pati mga faculty, no? Ah, uh, yung mga teachers, no? Yung mga na in the, in the profession, and that's why I uh, added some of in my slides. Na may anong talagang uh, term as school burnout, no? So, ah, uh, specific siya. So yun nga related to school work, no? Ah, uh, yung ah. Uh, Uh, emotional exhaustion related to schoolwork, uh, cynicism, no, yung parang negative na in 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 passing your work, 
or in taking your exam and then and decrease efficacy no bumababa yung grades nila because of that or kung faculty uh yung performance is is uh uh decrease no and then uh yun nga exhausted din sila and then uh negative attitude towards work already okay uh If you have like a patient who comes to your clinic because of those three things, so no? exhaustion, uh, cynicism, and then um, affecting their work, and then you diagnose them not to have a psychiatric illness but just a burnout syndrome, um, would you advise a counseling sessions um, for them to recover quickly? Yeah, actually, yun nga. Aside from yung mga mindfulness, gratitude, etc., resiliency, uh, just talking to someone, no? And sometimes kasi, um, hindi lang naman kasi usap yun, so you can also uh, make uh, changes in your life, yun yung mga, yun yung mga life, work-life balance, you can plan it out with the psychologist or your psychiatrist, and then um, uh, device ways in order to avoid anything that would uh, predispose you to have this burnout. So, uh, maganda rin na uh, usually uh, I would suggest nga, a session with a psychologist or psychiatrist uh, to be able to discuss and um, uh, make plans about what to do about the burnout syndrome. Are there any long-term effects of burnout? Uh, if we let it as it is, no? so pababayaan natin na ganyan lang siya, wala tayong ginagawa, we don't adapt ways uh, in order to address it or to combat it, definitely it may lead to a psychiatric illness or mental health issue. You mentioned about school burnout. No, during the COVID pandemic, di ba? Meron tayong parang Zoom <laughs> burnout or what do you call? It? Kasi di ba ang hirap din yung screen, oh, ang yan, screen burnout ba? And we had academic breaks. No? So an- ano ba yung usual na advisable period of uh, continuous uh, studies and putting in academic breaks? Meron bang ano John recommended? period kasi usually uh, sa ano no sa younger uh, students parang quarter di ba sila two months two and a half months and then long exams maybe uh yun nga actually one of the highest uh, rates of anxiety and depression was during the pandemic sa amin na ah, i went in my practice na dumami, lalo na yung mga adolescents and actually grade, grade school uh, students who experience uh, psychiatric symptoms during the pandemic. Uh, this was, yun nga, um, nung meron tayong online, nagkaroon sila ng problema, and then nung bumalik sa face-to-face, nagkaroon din sila ng problema. Parang yung, adapt, yung adaptation nila at saka resiliency nila uh, affected how they got back to uh to both no so so uh for me siguro yun nga uh regular breaks are recommended talaga for uh for any for uh, like yun nga profession or for for school uh yung sinabi nating um uh, uh, adding something in your schedule in order for you to be out of that environment for some time yung parang me time off time mo uh is recommended and speaking of breaks uh if somebody files for a leave because of burnout like how do we address that how how long do we wait for that person to come back to work um is it a case to case thing uh may person to person variability ba siguro case to case thing then kasi if it's the first time na if a file naman yan na burnout then maybe you can give him or her time, no? Eh, pero kung mga pang limang beses, pang anim na beses na na-burn out na siya, eh, parang medyo uh, i-refer na natin sa professional mm-hmm. sa buro kasi baka 
iba na yung ano, iba na yung pinagbe-breakad niya. So, uh, it's a case to case, siguro individual pa rin, no? Uh, we have to evaluate each person individually and uh, give them the sense of ano, yung yung para maano natin. Uh, understanding sa page sa dun sa person. Okay. So here's a a pressing question and <laughs> may pahabol na question. So what would you advise a person who says that he or she is experiencing burnout in their married or family life? So they cannot walk away from that, no? Because they're part of the family. Yes, we mentioned that in the start of my lecture, no. Pwedeng occupational, no? pwedeng uh, school, pwedeng... Family ito. Diba? Ang emotional question is... Burn out to. Mukhang <laughs> emotional siya, no? So maybe uh, suggest a seeking professional help also. no? Kasi uh, yung mga marriage uh, counselors no? can help uh, in uh, defining kung ano yung magiging problems nila or nagiging problems ng married couple and then uh, they would be able to address uh, itong so-called marriage burnout nila uh, as a couple no so they can work out it uh, na silang dalawa hindi lang yung mag-isa dapat so yun nga it's not suggested that they can just walk away kasi nga may sinumpaan po sila no so may mga vows po yan hindi naman pwedeng iiwanan na lang basta-basta just because you feel stress or burnt out already baka lang magbakasyon. Yes, vacation. From each other. From each other. And Di ba? Kasi walang bakasyon. Yeah. Okay. And the other thing, no, you mentioned na one of the parang protective factors for burnout is gratitude. no? Hmm. Kasi sometimes, uh, this is not, ano eh, this is taken for granted, di ba? Parang akala mo, wala lang siya. Pero, totoo pala, no, be yes. having a, grateful um, attitude would help um, decrease or prevent uh, not, burnout? Uh, not only in uh, yung, yung uh, socially, no, na, na parang gratifying but mm. when there have been studies in yung mga pet scan, no, yung mga sa brain studies, <laughs> when, <laughs> yeah, when, when you say thank you, when you say when you 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 express gratitude mayroon part of the brain na nagla-light up so yun yung parang na, nasasana yung part of the brain na yon na na you're saying thank you you're, that you're expressing gratitude so uh, meron siyang neurophysiological basis hindi lang yung parang social basis lang oh. ayan meron pa yata uh, i think one of the last questions how do we build resilience as a preventive measure among the young ones Oh. Kasi parang importante ang resilience to combat yes. burnout. So, yes. parang is it possible na the generation now is less resilient than in the past? Oh. That's why we're seeing more burnout cases also these past few years. Sometimes guilty din kasi yung parents, iba, yung like gratified. So, na ano yung kanilang re- resilience? Hmm. Uh, siguro uh, one of the things yun yung, yung, yung resilience is uh, kasi nga meron difference in generations we can see from our generation no to uh, millennials to Gen Z's etc. So may mga iba-iba yung attitudes talaga uh, about work about relationships about everything about emotionality etc. So uh, maybe we have to consider yung each generation and how we can uh, adapt or how we can uh, ide- understand each generation so para magkaroon tayo na ano magkaroon tayo ng understanding in, in between generations and i think that can also enhance the resiliency in the process i think uh, dr ida we don't have time left maybe we can ask our very special guest, Dr. Pineda, uh, to give his five last words for today. Yes. Okay. So, as we've mentioned, no, yeah, burnout is something uh, very common. It's something that we can we encounter where uh, in our work, in school, uh, or in relationships. No, pwede ka burnout sa relationships. So, uh, 
yun nga, yung three R's natin, no? recognize, uh, reverse, and be become resilient, uh, will be uh, the key factors in combating burnout in our lives. And before we let Dr. Pineda go, no, a mere presence here with us this afternoon has given us a greater impetus and hope to keep our life balanced and stay happy and healthy. So one last question, what values or values as a Thomasian are working best in your life that has kept you in balance? I think one value is uh, our uh, sense of gratitude towards our mentors. No? So it's something that uh, is ingrained within us as students that uh, we... Uh, try to uh, look back on what we have uh, accomplished and what uh, these mentors have contributed to what we have accomplished as well. Okay, maraming salamat po ulit, Dr. Pineda. Um, it's such an, an honor to have you here. Thank you so much for your time and your expertise. Dr. Aida, no, napakaganda ng ating talakayan at kwentuhan. It was so engaging, so enlightening. We learned a lot from this um, session today. We wish to thank our sponsors, the USD Medical Alumni Association and the USD Alumni Association. We have some announcements. The Dominican Community of Calaruega, together with USD Alumni Association and the Office of the Alumni Relations and the Friends for the Love of Service, would like to thank all those who joined and supported the medical, surgical, and dental mission last Sunday in Barangay Kailaway and the nearby barangays of Nasugbu, Batangas. Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Before we end the show, we would like to thank all our alumni, students, and friends who have faithfully watched, shared, and liked our Bridges episodes. We share with you the blessings of Bridges and do continue to stay with us. Please like and share our show and subscribe to the USD Thomasian Alumni Community YouTube channel and Facebook page. The past episodes of Bridges can also be watched in our YouTube channel. Thank you for joining us today. Do watch Bridges again on Tuesday for another exciting episode. Always remember here at Bridges, we build bridges of faith, bridges of hope, and bridges of love. Dr. Raida, salamat po. Yeah. Enjoy I, the rest of I the evening. You. <laughs> Enjoy uh, the rest of the evening. God bless us all and mabuhay. Thank you. Thank you.